Hey guys, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessOpeningsExplained.com and today I want to show you how to fight against the wing gambit. Now, what is the wing gambit? This is a very rare guest at tournament practice and it happens after e4, c5 and this really unusual move b4. This is called the wing gambit. You see, white is trying to sacrifice the wing pawn so that he's going to get two central pawns in the center. After c takes b4, white wants to play d4 and basically get full control over the center. Of course, this is white's idea and we are going to punish it. This is definitely not an opening you see at Grandmaster level. You only see it occasionally among the club level mostly. So how do we punish the gambit? We accept it. C takes B is the way to do it. So here White has sort of two main alternatives. Immediately take over the center with D4. This is the main line. But White has also tried to offer another pawn this move a3 is a sacrifice. So here, let's not get greedy. Let's not grab the pawn on a3. This is very good time to strike in the center. And I want you to remember this. Once you took the b4 pawn, you're really not afraid of anything. And it's important to strike in the center with d5. So you ignore the gift, strike in the center, e takes d, queen takes d5. Notice very important concept. This b4 pawn is acting as defender of the c3 square. Now the knight can't go there. That means our queen, thanks to the b4 pawn, is quite secure in the middle of the board. So this is a cool little trick. If you get this position in blitz, your opponents may play a6, b in autopilot. And guess what? After queen e5, game over. Wouldn't it be cool to finish the game in five moves because of the double attack? you will win the rook and queen is never going to get captured on a8, never going to get trapped. Wait, white is simply lost. But of, of course, white doesn't have to fall for the trap. Knight f3 is the most common move. We win the center with e5, a takes b, bishop b4, and black is doing pretty good. If he attacks the bishop with c3, we simply play bishop c5, knight a3, knight f6, and there is really no danger. Either bishop c4 or knight b5 is easily countered. Let's look at knight b5. Simply castle, knight c7, and it looks as though, oops, we just walked into a fork. The queen and the rook are under attack. But tactics come to the rescue. Can you guys spot the winning combination? Yep, the move here is bishop takes f2 sacrifice. So king takes, queen c5 check, and you're going to get the knight, and black is simply winning. So let's get back to the bishop c4 idea. So instead of knight b5, which we simply castle, bishop c4 is another try. Queen check, very important intermezzo. Bishop back, castles, knight b5, and now knight a6 is good enough. Yes, our knight is slightly misplaced, but we have full control over the center. Most importantly, black still is up a pawn. So this is one game went like this back in the day and black got a great position. So that's pretty much all this move a3. Nothing really that dangerous. Uh, one other move that you may want to consider, so instead of a3 is this move d4. This is the central strategy, the most common move. And here, once again, you already know the idea strike in the center d5 x clam and again if he takes the queen takes d5 once again the knight cannot go to c3 thanks to the b4 pawn it's acting as a very powerful protector of our queen so knight f3 could happen knight c6 c4 takes on passant knight takes queen a5 and here white could try either d5 trying to gain that space and hit our knight or bishop d2. Well, bishop d2 simply e6. And if knight b5 discover attack on the queen, we go back to d8. The queen is not in danger. 
And black is simply better. The obvious development is knight f6, bishop e7 castles, and this guy could get developed on b7. Simply, black is a healthy pawn up. So, what else could he do? So, let's go back here after queen a5. Well, d5 looks like an interesting try. Here, I don't recommend you to play queen takes c3 because after bishop d2, queen somewhere, pawn takes. White simply has too much development. Look, the queen doesn't really count. We have no development whatsoever. So the lesson here is, guys, don't be greedy. Simple chess. Okay, knight's under attack, but his knight's under attack as well. Let's play e6, x clan. This is a very good move. All right, he takes the knight, bishop b4, that's the whole point. We want to develop the bishop and then win the knight. The knight is not going anywhere, trust me. And here after bishop d2, bishop takes c3, white doesn't have much compensation. So the pawn is well protected. If bishop takes, queen takes, white's king is in danger. This is simply bad. All right, let's go on to the main line, d5, e5. And this position is kind of familiar to a lot of you as we love our accelerated dragon, especially against the Alpin. Remember, after e4, c5, c3, we love this move g6. Well, here we can also play this plan. So after knight c6, white could play a3. And here this position actually happened in my game in Reykjavik Open against a low rated player. But nevertheless, this is an interesting try. The idea is to get the bishop to a3. But I simply said, okay, I don't mind this. The bishop can go to a3 or even the knight. He took with the knight, which wasn't really a surprise. My idea is pretty much the same. g6. We already know that the bishop is good on g7. And the reason is I don't quite want to block my bishop. I want to pin the knight when it gets to f3. And that's what happened. Knight f3, bishop g7, bishop e2, knight h6, c4, castles, castles, logical chess. And after bishop g4, black completes development with the extra pawn. I can show you a couple more moves until black gets a really promising position. Knight c2 takes, takes. And here my opponent realized there is some big problem. The d4 pawn is protected one, two, three times, but one of the defenders is gone after bishop takes f3. And he really didn't want to lose a second pawn after queen takes. I can take on d4, takes and double attack the rook and the bishop, and things are looking pretty bad for white. So he didn't want to go into this line. Instead, let's go back. He played really ugly move, g takes f3, knight f5 tempo move, bishop e3, e6, and black is much better. Just simply look at white's position. The king structure is absolutely horrible. This pawn is weak. Keep in mind, black has these two pass pawns. Absolutely huge advantage. Well, here we go, guys. Now you have really powerful weapon against the wing gambit. Remember to take the pawn on b4 and blow up the center with d5 and you have no worries. Thanks so much. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for chessopeningsexplained.com.